Hello and welcome to today's video about an area model for fraction multiplication. First, let's talk about a vocabulary term that you will need to know for today's lesson. There are two separate definitions for this term that we are going to be looking at today. First, let's review what you already know about an area model. It is a model for multiplication in which the length and width of a rectangle represent the factors and the area of the rectangle represents the product. Here is where we are going to add a second definition that relates specifically to fractions. Now let's look at this definition as it relates to fractions. An area model is a model showing fractions as parts of a whole. The whole is a region such as a circle or a rectangle representing the one or unit whole. First, let's explore the concept of using the word of to mean the same thing as multiply. Here's what I mean. What do you think of when I ask you to figure out what three sets of four is equal to? If your mind went directly to the multiplication problem three times four, you are correct. Using the word of in mathematics will typically indicate that you are supposed to multiply some numbers together. This is the same idea when using fractions. In this case, we have the number sentence two-thirds of three-fourths. If you were to rewrite this number sentence using mathematical symbols, you would write two-thirds times three-fourths because that's what this number sentence is asking you to do. The next thing that we are going to talk about is using the area model for fraction multiplication. You got a small taste of this in our last video. We are going to begin by multiplying two-thirds times three-fourths, and we're going to use the same method that we used in our last video called fractions of fractions. Beginning with the denominator of the second fraction, which is four, we are going to divide this rectangle into fourths vertically. Now our rectangle looks like this. Then we are going to shade three-fourths of the rectangle. There's one fourth, two fourths, and finally three fourths. The next step is to divide this rectangle horizontally into thirds because that is the denominator of the first fraction. When we're done, it will look like this. Our next step will be to shade two thirds. It will look like this. You will once again notice that there are certain boxes in this rectangle that have been shaded more than once. They are this box, this box, this box, this one, this one, and this one. All together we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 total sections. So this is going to be our denominator. The number of boxes that got shaded more than once are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is going to be our numerator, meaning that 2 thirds times 3 fourths is 6 twelfths. If I asked you to reduce this fraction, you would be able to write 1 half because you know that 6 is half of 12, and when you divide both the top and the bottom of this fraction, you get 1 over 2 or 1 half. Finally, let's look at the fraction multiplication algorithm, which I know some of you have already figured out. If we had the fractions a over b times c over d, what does that actually mean? a over b times c over d is the same thing as a times c over b times d. But what does this mean when we actually apply it to numbers? Let's take a look at the problem from the last slide. 3 fourths times 2 thirds. The fraction model at the top of this screen indicates that a times a over b times c over d equals a times c over b times d. So let's apply that to our numbers. 3 times 2 over 4 times 3. These should be relatively simple math facts at this point in our year. 3 times 2 is equal to 6 and 4 times 3 is equal to 12, which is exactly what we got using the area model on the last slide. 
Once again, if we were asked to reduce this fraction to simplest terms, we would know that we could reduce it down to one half. Let's look at one more example. One third times four fifths. This equals one times four over three times five. One times four is the same thing as four, and three times five is the same thing as 15. Neither four nor 15 have any matching factors, so this is the smallest possible form that this fraction can be in. The answer to one third times four fifths is four fifteenths. Here is your practice problem of the day. Multiply the fractions four fifths times three sixths. You must draw an area model in your notebook and use it to solve this problem. When you are finished, you can use the multiplication algorithm for fractions to make sure that your work is correct. Don't forget to reduce your final answer down to its simplest form. Good luck!